Okay, so who's tapping for and why tap? Tapping is for anyone who experiences stress in their life and for anyone who has dreams and goals but feels stuck sometimes on the journey. There's evidence that 85% of physical dis-ease, disease, is actually rooted emotionally. So tapping is a wonderful practice if you're trying to resolve a diagnosis or want to prevent one. Our emotions aren't just stored in our mind, they're stored in our body systems, organs, muscles, etc. The body will hold these emotions for 10 to 40 years, but if we don't listen to and seek resolve for the symptoms, our body eventually gives up, unable to hold on for us any longer, and disease appears in whatever body part or parts has been holding the destructive memory. I know, it's wild, but I want you to be excited to listen to what your body's been telling you rather than being fearful. Being fearful just gives you a spike of that cortisol, ignites your fight or flight, takes the blood from your thinking brain, shoots it down into your legs so you can run or hide, and that's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Once I learned to listen and tap through the sensations I was feeling, it made so much sense that my body had actually been showing up for me and talking to me the whole time, not trying to work against me. Tapping often focuses on what we feel are negative thoughts and patterns, but only so that we can disrupt that pattern in our brain and experience more positive emotions like joy and confidence. I'll give you one specific example that I feel fits everyone's journey to help you better understand everything else that I'm gonna teach you. Anything that we react to instead of respond gently to, things that we might call trauma, triggers, or PTSD, come from a point in time that life felt generally safe for us but something happened that no longer felt safe. In that very moment, our fight or flight was tripped and our subconscious made sure to log every last living detail of that experience to protect us from it happening again. We also really need to understand the role of the subconscious and the difference between how we remember things versus how our subconscious remembers them. So let's say you're in third grade, playing and having fun on the playground, just being your magical little self. And out of the blue, you're shoved to the ground by an older kid. You didn't even see it coming. You just went from feeling safe to not feeling safe and your body knew it. You felt surprised and your stomach began to hurt as you looked around to see what happened. You saw the kid. Let's even go a step farther and say that in the principal's office with your parents and the kid and his parents later, you find out that he mistook you for his little sibling and meant no harm to you. He even apologized. The next year, you're so excited to enter fourth grade and you can't get there fast enough. But when you walk into the classroom, your stomach starts to hurt and it only gets worse while you get settled into your table group with three other kids who you really like. Your stomach hurts again every single day when you get to school. Now, As an adult, you're at your best friend's wedding and get a stomach ache. Then you show up at a new job you've been excited about and your stomach hurts even worse. But why is this happening? Well, your mom might say that you've gotten stomach aches since you were a kid and you were probably just always trying to get out of going to school. Does that sound familiar? But that's not true for you. And your friends start telling you that you probably have social anxiety, but that doesn't feel right either. Enter tapping. You don't know why you keep getting those stomach aches, but you're fed up and you want it to stop. We do the thing we do. We focus on the stomach aches and any situations you're able to recall that seem to surround you, these stomach aches and maybe social settings. Any good practitioner is going to take you back in time. I have you recall all the times that you can remember getting these stomach aches and we just stay curious. Then pop out of nowhere. You remember that time the kid shoved you to the ground in third grade. So we tap on that too. It's common that when this happens, your adult brain says something like, but it ended up fine. I wasn't hurt and the kid apologized. But in that moment, you were shoved to the ground. You didn't know any of this. You only felt hurt and scared. And that's when your subconscious logged all the info it could around the event. So that if it saw anything similar in your surroundings, it could help you run or hide and therefore not get hurt again. So. You and I stay focused on third grade and we act like it has something to do with what appears to be social anxiety as an adult. Turns out your brain had logged the playground as suspect, all the other kids playing as suspect. It doesn't really know what hurt you. It also logged kids with red hair because it turns out the kid who pushed you had red hair. So now anytime you enter a situation where there's something fun, lots of people, or maybe even just a redhead, you might 
feel a rush of that original emotion that you felt that day. As we continue to stay curious, we learned that in fourth grade, there were twin girls at your table with red hair. A guest at the wedding with red hair and at your new job, your trainer has red hair. <laughs> and because your subconscious is wired to keep you alive, not necessarily emotionally stable, it hid this redhead detail from you to protect you. And when it saw a redhead in your vision, it just gave you a little dose of your run or hide so that you could run or hide from the redhead before the redhead could shove you down. And because your subconscious doesn't know the difference between a memory, something it's seeing around you, you talking about something you remember and reality happening in real time, Every time a redhead was around, your brain did not know if it was a different person or if you were literally being shoved to the ground right then. This is why when we talk to a friend or a therapist about it, we don't always feel better because each recall, or like in this case, you didn't know what the trigger was, but your subconscious did. So each time your subconscious saw a redhead, it was like a brand new reinforcement of that original memory, making the feelings around it worse and worse with time, not better. And this is why we can feel it in our body. Like it's happening all over again. Our brain thinks it is. What the heck? Now you've got what I call a nice thick callus around redheads, <laughs> fun crowds, lots of people. And that's actually been the problem unbeknownst to you. And I just have to say this, I have nothing against redheads, but that's kind of the point here is that it's usually something that as our adult brain looks back on, we think that doesn't even matter. That's so silly. Of course, that wouldn't be the problem, but we need to go all the way back to that little child brain and what it was thinking and feeling in the moment that your brain might have logged as the problem. This is why we love tapping. It helps us to remove things from that recipe card that are no longer serving us as we walk through life. So, the good news is while we talked about all of that together, we were tapping and it's the tapping that sends a continuous signal into your amygdala where your fight or flight is that you are safe to recall these events and these memories without getting a stomach ache and without wanting to run. For this reason, most of the work to resolve this reaction is already done. We don't always need to know the details that our subconscious has deemed as dangerous, but tapping helps us to find them if we need to. In this case, a lot of events were revealed that hadn't previously felt important. So to calm the fight or flight around these things, we just need to recall those events that came to mind until your body no longer has a physical or visceral reaction. Once you can recall these events with me with a calm body, your mind will calm also. And the details that your subconscious once thought were threats are now filed safety. The next time you're in a fun crowd or see a redhead, that stomachache simply just won't appear as you're now able to experience new similar events as brand new isolated events. Not only do we get to effortlessly stop reacting physically how we used to, in this case of it being social events, but a new presence will be felt in social settings that you weren't able to enjoy fully before. I like to say we're like sponges. And I know that talking about tapping and considering tapping can feel like a lot of negative energy or things that we're taught not to focus on. But I want to assure you, the reason that we're focusing in on these hard, heavy, uncomfortable emotions is like taking a sponge and we are the sponge and we're full of all of these emotions and all of these pieces of information that we don't need anymore. And while we tap, we're squeezing that sponge out of all these negative emotions, negative memories, all these events that we don't need logged anymore. And just like a nice, clean, empty sponge, we are ready to be dipped in whatever good things are around us. We love positive affirmations. Of course, we want to be peaceful and joyful and happy, but have you ever tried so hard to be peaceful, joyful, happy, thankful, read positive affirmations all of the time, and you still just don't feel like they're sticking? It's because a very full sponge can't soak up anymore. So with tapping, we are wringing out those traumas, those triggers, those reactions, anything that's not serving you anymore. This means that anything that is a real reaction, an important reaction to your current surroundings won't get squeezed out and we'll get to continue addressing it. But anything that's no longer serving you is wrung out. And now you go to those social events and not only is the stomach ache down, but you actually feel very present in a way that you always wanted to and you didn't even know it was possible. 
I feel like this is a really good time to tell you that that story I told you is very, very similar to why I had chronic anxiety. So I can guarantee you this weird tapping thing really works. Social events that I always wanted to be at seemed really fun to my front brain. I knew I wanted to be there, but they were full of physical and emotional discomfort. Tapping really helped me clear that out. And now I can really soak up those events and those memories like I am front, center, and present. So trust me and rest assured, as we focus on the yucky and comfortable negative stuff, you are literally going to get up from tapping because tapping is where we do the work, okay? This is where we put in the effort. You get up, you walk away, and the results fall upon you. That means you go to your next social event and all of a sudden you just feel so much better for some reason. Let's move on because you need to know how this magicalness was discovered in the first place how tapping was actually discovered. In the 1980s, there was a woman, Mary, who had been terrified of water for over 40 years. It began as an infant for her, and as an adult, she couldn't take a bath with the water full. When it rained, she'd become anxious and terrified. Her therapist, Dr. Roger Callahan, had a pool outside his office, but just talking about water gave Mary a pit in her stomach. Dr. Callahan studied the body's meridian system that ancient Chinese acupuncture was founded on and learned that the pressure point under the eye is connected to the stomach. A year and a half into their work and with no resolve, Roger had Mary gently tap this pressure point while they talked about her fear of water. To both of their surprise, she jumped up and ran to the pool outside his office and began splashing the water, even getting it on herself. She expressed that she didn't know why, but that she suddenly wasn't afraid anymore. And the pit in her stomach was gone. 40 years of being afraid, a year and a half of talk therapy, and she felt better immediately once her energy system was accessed properly. This is what sparked tapping as we know it today. 